Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz. Happy Sunday and another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to recap on the heavy rainfall up in the northeast of New South Wales and parts of the southeast of Queensland and talk about the flooding situation up there. We'll give a general weather forecast for the cold front streaming across the nation. We'll need to give an in-depth one for the West Australian severe weather outbreak expected. And we're going to talk about some tropical storms expected across New South Wales, Queensland, the Northern Territory and WA later on in the video. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather update. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support recently has been been much appreciated. So take a look at the current satellite picture over on the east coast. You can see the swirling remnants of the low pressure system that has inundated the northeast of New South Wales with some heavy falls. It's now offshore from the Sunshine Coast, um, specifically Fraser Island, now streaming further towards the northeast and will continue to weaken throughout the course of today. It still does have some thunderstorms on its eastern and southeastern flanks, which are streaming across towards Norfolk Island, uh, Lord Howe Island rather right now. And some of the wispy cloud is extending over towards Norfolk Island. There are some heavy falls possible on Lord Howe Island throughout the course of today and some big seas expected there with some damaging winds but in terms of a threat for mainland Australia in particularly Queensland and New South Wales it is pretty much over minus two or three rivers, rivers which are currently at the minor flooding alert however I'm expecting the river levels to start dropping over the coming couple of hours. Now, you can see the low pressure system here. It is now starting to weaken off, and as such, the wave threat and the storm tide threat from this weather system is also starting to ease off. There's really not much in the way of rainfall expected from this system anymore, just a few light showers here and there. There will be some showers streaming as far south as Wollongong, so the entire northeast of New South Wales is expecting some rather unpleasant weather throughout the course of today. Cool temperatures with an onshore flow providing cool winds and some showers. But that is some pretty significant rainfall that we have heard about up in the northeast of New South Wales. In fact, 350 millimetres was the highest three-day accumulations just outside of Lismore. Uh, I think Boon Boon or whatever it was called uh, recorded uh, 166 millimetres overnight, so some pretty high accumulations there. Areas outside of Coffs Harbour, Yamba and Dorigo also received some pretty significant rainfall accumulations as well, up to 250 millimetres from this weather event. And all in all, it was slightly wetter than what the forecast was expecting. I was a bit sceptical at first, just taking a look at the models. They were downtrending and they were a little bit uncertain in all fairness. Uh, in terms of a forecast to give a couple of days out. So I was a little bit unsure with this weather system, but overall, I think we made a pretty good forecast. We were spot on for southeastern Queensland, about, um, I think it was 50 millimetres in the end for Mount Tambourine in a 24-hour period, and total accumulations were up to 80 millimetres there, and I said three-day accumulations would be between that 60 to 100 millimetre threshold, so we were spot on there. Unfortunately, Brisbane and the northern suburbs of Brisbane really didn't pick up any rainfall, nothing worth writing home about. The, most, the majority of the rainfall was in the northeast of New South Wales and I believe right now two rivers are at the minor flooding. There is a chance that one of them, I think the one that's flowing towards Grafton gets towards moderate flooding by this afternoon. However, the chances of that are low and they are also dropping and I don't think that's going to be anything worth worrying about. So make sure you are staying safe on the roads today. There has been some wind damage as well and I have read comments about uh, how some roads are blocked off because of fallen trees. So again, make sure you are taking extra care on the roads. I still wouldn't advise any shore-based activities, boating, fishing, swimming, surfing. Uh, not only are the waters pretty cool up there in the wake of this weather system, but also the waves are quite high uh, and certainly going to be some pretty unpleasant weather out there throughout the course of today. But apart from that, I think this weather system is pretty much wrapped up with. Uh, in terms of rainfall, there's really not much more to be uh, talking about here. And in fact, rainfall over the next 10 days looks pretty light, all things considered. Only about 40 millimetres it's expected up there and that's not really worth diving into and breaking down in greater depth. The chance of thunderstorms across New South Wales has dropped off over the next two weeks but we will keep a very close eye on things and another low pressure system like this one is likely to happen sometime soon just with the rainfall forecast that we currently have set up for New South Wales. It is pretty extreme. Whew, that's a long-winded wrap-up for this weather system. We're not going to have to talk about a weather system like this for a while. Hopefully, let's go and give some love to the southern states, New South Wales, and Victoria, and also Tasmania, where a cold front has swept through overnight and is providing some pretty gusty conditions, especially to the mountainous areas here at Threadbow, 70 km an hour winds out of the northeast. And winds are also getting pretty gusty across Tasmania, up to 85 km an hour over at Gaffs Hill. And that's as a cold front streams across, impacting Melbourne right about now with some light rainfall, some light to moderate falls across the northern parts of Tasmania, and some light 
to moderate falls expected to move into the southeastern corner of New South Wales, potentially impacting Sydney with some light showers to maybe a moderate shower or two and a thunderstorm later on tonight, specifically and most likely in the most southern suburbs of Sydney. Let's take a look what the satellite imagery looks like right now. You can see it is a weak cold front. There are some heavier falls, however, associated with this weather system now moving south of Port Phillip Bay. In fact, there is some proper heavy rainfall down there, but in terms of rainfall that's about to stream in towards Melbourne, I mean, it will probably be through Melbourne by the time this video is up, but we are talking about rainfall accumulation, so only about five to 10 millimeters an hour, so really nothing worth writing home about. And in stark contrast to the beautiful weather for Brisbane's thumping win over the Sydney Swans yesterday in the AFL Grand Final. What a fantastic game that was, and let me know your thoughts and feelings and opinions in the comments section down below. I was very happy with the result. I was also pretty happy with how the game started off. Uh, it was a tight one for the first quarter, but then after that, it was really just a runaway thumping by Brisbane, which as a Brisbane fan, great to see. However, uh, probably a little bit, uh, a bit of a kick in the guts for Sydney. They worked very hard this season and were on top of the ladder for a very long period of time. And they did look the, uh, to be in the hot seat to win the AFL Grand Final. But this is a weather channel, not a footy channel or a sports channel. So let's keep things back on the weather and head things over towards Western Australia, where we do have severe weather now in the forecast. And this is certainly something that I really want to spend a little bit of time delving into. This is unseasonable winter weather that's about to blow through here. From Tuesday evening, we're going to see a weak cold front turn into a strong cold front blowing through the southwest of Western Australia. And we'll break down the uh, entire forecast here. This cold front here is going to be pretty strong. It's going to drag in some winds from the northeast to the north. And we will see a west coast trough establish itself on Tuesday afternoon as well. However, it will be slightly inland, which means we built towns are expecting a very warm day on Tuesday. In fact, it could go up into the mid 30s for parts of the Gascoigne and the low 30s to high 20s for parts of the Wheat Belt. And that will spark some evening thunderstorms in the northern parts of the Wheat Belt, north of Great Eastern Highway, Meriden, Bruce Rock, that sort of area. And then later on Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning, we could see a burst of thunderstorms develop in the southern part of the Wheat Belt around Lake Grace and Katanning. We'll also see this cold front blow through the southwest, reaching the southwest capes at around 6 or 7 a.m. local time before hitting the southern suburbs in Perth around 6 or 7 a.m. local time as well. And then the Perth metro around 8 or 9 a.m. And just in time for the morning commute as well, the roads are going to be pretty ugly on Wednesday morning with showers and storms expected then. It'll reach the northern suburbs by around 9 a.m. and then communities further up the coast such as Geraldton and Kalbarri by around 10 or 11 a.m. where not much rainfall is expected up there before blowing deeper into Western Australia and bringing showers and storms into the wheat belt. But the front will die off and ease off pretty quickly. Now, I did say that yesterday's forecast was a very bullish one. It was also quite a concerning one. And as such, the forecast models have backed off what they are expecting. Still in the wake of this system, we'll likely see a violent, vigorous southwesterly flow fire up from the south, and that will likely impact the Perth metro area from about Wednesday afternoon onwards. We'll likely see a couple of hours of pretty significant showers for throughout the southern suburbs. They will be most frequent along the southwest coast between Margaret River across to about Bremer Bay or Hopetown, across towards Esperance from Wednesday night into early Thursday morning, where some heavy showers and storms are expected, the potential for small hailstones, and maybe even a light dusting of snow on the higher elevations of the Stirling Ranges very early Thursday morning but we're getting very late on into the winter season now, so that is not overly likely. But yeah, the forecast for Perth has been made to look a lot less severe. Now, don't be fooled. I'm not going to forget these thunderstorms up here. We're going to get to those in just a second, but I would like to talk about rainfall just for the time being now. We'll just break it down for the 24-hour period between Wednesday, uh, or the 36-hour period between Wednesday and Thursday at early afternoon. You can see it here, peak rainfall accumulations have been backed down dramatically. Now only expecting about 40 millimetres as opposed to yesterday's forecast, which was suggested up to 70 millimetres. And yesterday, we were also seeing a pretty widespread of rainfall right up the coast towards Calbarry and Geraldton. And I think this forecast now is a lot more reasonable. The southern and the eastern suburbs of Perth will likely pick up the majority of the rainfall. Perth, I can only see getting about 15 to 20 millimetres from this weather system. And then down towards the south coast as well, they could be up towards 40 millimetres between Northcliffe and Albany. Northcliffe has already picked up 1,050 millimetres this uh, year so far. It's been a pretty wet year down there. In fact, the entire southwest quarter, minus a few spots around Meriden and Southern Cross, have had a pretty wet year in terms of uh, rainfall for Western Australia, so that has been great to see. But yeah, Northcliffe looks set to uh, go for the kind of the upper percentile of rainfall for this year, so we will keep a very close eye on things there. Another 50 millimetres will bring them over 1,100 millimetres, with three months left uh, in the year for more rainfall to fall. But yeah, looking pretty good in terms of rainfall across the southwest. Unfortunately, it's not going to penetrate too far into the wheat belt. There is a chance of some isolated pockets of heavy 
heavy rainfall just to finish off uh, harvesting season deeper into the wheat belt uh, around Meriden and Southern Cross and thunderstorms on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. But that rainfall is going to be very sporadic, very hit and miss, and certainly not something that I would recommend relying on at this time. And we will just touch on soil moisture values and drought uh, for the southwest corner. We are starting to uh, experience some mild drought conditions across parts of the southwest as things do start to dry up a little bit now. You can see soil moisture values are really starting to dry up for this time of the year. We've had a very dry September, so it will be good when this rainfall gets through and hopefully wetten things up again, once again, for the southwest as we head into our dry season down there. So this rainfall is much needed. It is going to be very much welcome uh, because we have had a couple of days of dry weather and just before, a couple of weeks of dry weather rather, and just before I talk about these thunderstorms, I'd like to ask people of the southwest, if you've got a rain gauge, do you find the Bureau of Meteorology's rain observations to be a little bit hit and miss? I've got a rain gauge and I consistently pick up about 20% to 30% more rainfall than the Bureau of Meteorology and I know that can just be uh, a, a location based thing. I am in a pretty wet area around Perth. Uh, however, again, with the proper calibrations, I have actually calibrated my uh, rain gauge down uh, on the screen. It's now recording about 90% of the rainfall that flows into it and it's not under any trees or anything and in fact, if anything, it's in a pretty exposed location so I'd think that wind would just completely blow the rainfall out of it. But it's just a question for people in the southwest. Do you find the Bureau of Meteorology's rainfall observations to be on the lower side of what they probably should be given your personal rainfall observations at your house? Just a question. Uh, that's all I want to know. Now, in terms of thunderstorms and showers across central parts of Western Australia from Tuesday afternoon, we will see them fire up again across the Gascoyne and into parts of the interior and gold fields. We only have to keep a close eye on these because they do look potentially severe with isolated pockets of heavy rainfall, large hailstones and damaging winds expected. Wednesday night, they're going to blow up in dramatic fashion in the uh, front of this low pressure system blowing through, the stretching from a line basically from Karangini National Park in the uh, Pilbara, right through the Gascoyne, north of Mekathara, down towards Lanista and Waluna, across to Warburg in the interior. It's going to be a big expanse of hit and miss thunderstorms across the central parts of Western Australia. This does look like a pretty dramatic forecast here and I cannot wait to see the satellite imagery because this is going to look absolutely amazing on satellite imagery and they will last right throughout Wednesday into early Thursday morning before they get swept into South Australia and weaken off there. Still though some showers and thunderstorms expected into early Thursday afternoon across the central parts of South Australia and take a look at rainfall observations here between uh, what is it from Tuesday afternoon through to Friday evening over this three and a half day period where these thunderstorms are expected to blow up. We're looking at some pretty decent rainfall observations possible across central parts of Western Australia. Unfortunately, this is not where farmers are or even ranchers are. This is true desert central Western Australia. It's out of pretty much every single town through here. So there's only going to be the odd remote mining community that picks up some good rainfall here. Potentially Warburton could get some and then down towards some of the more agricultural communities. I mean, the uh, cattle ranching communities down in the southern parts of the interior. We could also get some rainfall there, but I really wouldn't be betting the farm on that. This rainfall is going to be from thunderstorms. It will be hit and miss. And unfortunately, I think when you're mixing giant hailstones or large hailstones into the mix here, I don't think this is rainfall that farmers or cattle ranchers particularly want. Giant hailstones or large hailstones can cause significant damage and they often cause more harm than they do good across parts of Australia. Now, just before I finish off this video, we will show some love up into the tropics. We do have some more tropical weather inbound, especially over the coming months. We're going to start to see the build-up really take into effect across the northern parts of the Northern Territory and WA, and I imagine the weather is unbearable up in Darwin right now. We did have some storms on the forecast. I believe it was Wednesday for central parts of Queensland, but yeah, I wouldn't really um, expect anything too grand out of this. I think Wednesday afternoon we'll see some thunderstorms blow up around Longreach and Charleville, but these thunderstorms look like they're going to be pretty sporadic, pretty hit miss here and again I don't think they're going to be too much in the way of rainmakers. We also have some rain up in far north Queensland. The forecast has backed it off again from yesterday. In fact 10 day rainfall accumulations up there still look like a pretty disappointing 20 to 40 millimeters or so but yeah the rainfall is still streaming in up there. They really haven't had a dry season and the dry weather doesn't look like it's going to stick around for much longer. Looks like you're just going to get a return to some more showery crap from pretty uh, soon onwards. But in terms of a more tropical forecast unfortunately northern Australia really isn't seeing much in the way of rainfall over the next 10 days. This is early October though, but by Tuesday the 8th of October, we're starting to push into the time where I would start to see this monsoon trough start to creep a little bit further south. So it looks like we might have to wait until late October or early November for some thunderstorms and some rain to really start firing up across the Northern Territory in Western Australia and Queensland, which is normal, but considering the forecast this year is about a little bit later than when I would have initially expected it to start to pipe up the rainfall at least. So yeah, we might be waiting a couple more weeks until we start to 
see some true rainfall up there. But you bet, as soon as I get the first rumbles of activity on the forecast, I'll be the first to let you know. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel if tropical weather is your gig. And if weather around Australia is your gig, then there's no better way to get the latest weather coverage than by subscribing to this channel. We're trying to hit 20,000 by the end of the year. I've got the predictions coming out on Tuesday, the 1st of October. So that's just in two days now. That's when we're going to release the big wet predictions, the second iteration of them. And I've made some pretty big refinements to it. I was planning on recording the video today, but I'm going to leave it till tomorrow. We do have a wave of data coming out from some of the forecast models later on tonight. And I want to have that included in the recording. So I'll make that on Monday. Uh, I'm going to be cutting things really tight with work and so forth. So I will keep the, uh, keep you posted on that. But you bet Tuesday the 1st at 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, the predictions video will be coming out. And it's going to be a good one. It's going to be fully refined from the predictions last week. Uh, month. But yeah, that is all for me today. It's been a long-winded forecast update with a lot of plugs. So thank you so much for putting up with it this morning. Your support lately has been greatly appreciated, like I've said multiple times in this video. And a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Without them, I could not run this show or have access to the fancy software that I use to make this uh, these videos. So again, their support is amazing. But that is all for me today, and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.